Yeah, yeah, yeah! Come and take a look at the snow. Bright white as far as your eyesight goes. Come and take a look at the fields of snow. I'll just get my coat, then we're good to go. Come and take a look at the lake. Let's have a quick skate before it gets late. Come and take a look at the frozen lake. Put your clothes on, mate. Don't make that mistake. Ba 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 ba. Greetings, holiday shoppers. There are 103 shopping days left until Christmas, and you know what that means. It's time for another episode of Christmas Creeps, your one-stop shop for holiday movies and TV shows all year round. My name is Joseph Wade. I'll be your host for this evening. Here with me tonight is my good buddy, Johnny Five, the human robot. John, what's going on, buddy? Uh, Not a whole lot. We're here to watch uh, something that uh, just recently surfaced, uh, body cam footage from the Miami-Dade Sheriff Department. Um... No, I no, would no, argue no. murdering the Queen of England. No, no, I don't no, know no, who no. gave them an M sixty one Vulcan and why they mounted on a Dodge Challenger. No. I don't think they needed to shoot the Queen six thousand times in a minute with it. It's, I mean, I guess they proved he can no, shoot that fast. No. But the BBC has already shut down this broadcast, folks. I'm sorry. <laughs> they said it was a routine traffic stop. It does, nothing about it sounds routine, in my opinion. That's DeSantis's America for you, folks. I don't know what to tell you. Also, our our good friend Mr. Bradford is. Uh, under the weather, he is now absconded with whatever diseases uh, they have up north, but uh, we wish him a speedy recovery. Uh, folks, tonight on the show, it, it's a weird one because it just kind of fell into our lap this week. The whole story kind of fell into the world's lap this week. Uh, if you follow Twitter... I don't. <laughs> you're a smarter man than I am. Uh, but internet sleuths have been trying to figure out for years... Uh, the name of a mysterious unknown nineties Christmas cartoon based on nothing more than a random photo with an animated elf on the TV in the background. And this apparently has been going on for six years at this point. And literally as of like this week, as of this recording, it has only now come to light what this is. And when we saw it, and saw that there was a full copy of it on YouTube. I mean, the gears started turning, and here we are, everybody. We're going to talk about this thing. So how long ago was this found? The main, like, thrust of tweets that have kind of been unearthed come from September 2nd, 2022. So that's literally this week. Okay, so there still is a chance, we'll know tomorrow, there still is a chance, though, that this is actually the tape from The Ring, and it's going to kill us in seven days. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, by the time you people hear this, we might very well already be dead. Stay tuned for that. If Mr. Bradford comes back to do a show on All is Lonesome, you'll know that something terrible has happened to the two of us. Fuck it, we'll buy him a fucking Ouija board. He'll be fine. Hang on. Wait, no. We made Brad watch this, and at the last second, he had to back out. So, oh, uh, big old <sighs> whoops a right. beetle. <laughs> I'll give Karen the Ouija board. She, she, she'll be fine. <laughs> Podcasting from beyond the grave. Oh, God, it's not home for the horror days yet, folks. But no, the name of the special is The Soulmates, The Gift of Light from 1991. There is a a copy of it just surfaced on YouTube, I believe, again, as of this week. Um, Yeah, the one that's on here is listed as September 3rd, 2022 uh, from YouTuber Blame It On George. What you got, bud? What you got work, uh, cooking over there? Pumpkin Latte Blonde. Ooh. Sycamore I like it. Brewing. It's a local thing. I wanted something that sounded not too offensive. I was like, yeah. This sounds like it has <laughs> enough crap in it that I won't taste the alcohol as badly. Yeah, I mean... I mean it, I'm, t- I'm sorry I'm not like you and Brad where I can just drink a can of hops and that's it. I literally cannot. Like, that's that's death to me i can't do that uh the the less the less hoppy a beer is the more likely i am to drink it tonight i am going in sober which might be the wrong tack for this evening because i'm just drinking uh waterloo sparkling water this is the cranberry flavor they just put out for the holidays it's actually it's really good christmas cranberry christmas yeah this cranberry. it's very much the vibe that i got off of this special yeah so this is the Soulmate's Gift of Light, or also called The Light of Christmas. Is that what the alternate title is? The alternate title, I believe, is The Christmas Gift of Light. The Christmas so, Gift of Light. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's a couple of different titles floating around out there. But long story short, uh, somebody 
post somebody posted a photograph from like the early nineties that their family had been circulating or had been hanging on to. And like the running gag was what the heck is this cartoon that's playing in the background? People have been trying to figure this out on Twitter at least since 2016. And all of a sudden this week, you know, one random Twitter user said, Hey, my buddy has that tape. And all of a sudden now that tape has been uploaded to the internet for the whole world to see. Uh, and this apparently comes from a VHS tape of like four separate uh, Christmas specials, like all comp- compiled onto one tape. So there's three more of these things floating around out there that we could possibly do at some point. If I'm really feeling like torturing you guys, we might have to bring these back. But let's let's get into what this is, the Christmas gift of light for just a minute. Um so this it's basically about the adventures of uh an evil swing dancer named Angus McBrag and his sidekick who's definitely not Montana Max named Doubting Thomas. And they're trying to basically just sabotage Christmas. And the first scene in the entire short is these guys uh stalking around town at night. It's snowing, it's like Christmas Eve and uh, Ang- Angris, which is a name that I'm not going to get used to. I'm just going to call him Dan Backslide because that's what he looks like. I was going to say the mask. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's the mask. Uh, but he does all kinds of awful uh, Christmas things. Like he, he magics a cat up into a tree and he magics a kid's hat, you know, shoves it down his face and puts puts him into the into the dirt. And then he uses his magic to mess with the eyes of a seeing eye dog. And right away, like right there, stop, stop, stop. (laughs) This is just the worst like action I think I've seen in a Christmas cartoon maybe ever. Like you don't mess with a seeing eye dog. And also it's, I just to complain about one thing. It's, it's kind of like, all right, is this girl blind or is she blind, deaf and also stupid as hell? Because even if she doesn't have her seeing eye dog, she should know not to just trundle down the fucking front steps of her house into the street. She knows where the street is. She knows that what the steps are. Presumably, un- unless this is like, you know, this is before the time when they put those those uh, bumpers on the sidewalks to let blind people know where the street starts. I Still. thought they used those so kindergartners could go bowling. <laughs> Oh no no not not the not the side bumpers the floor bumpers. Okay. Yeah. You know you know what I'm talking about, right? I'll take your word for it. I'm st- I'm still I'm still imagining bowling. <laughs> Fair enough. Oh man. This is one of the most Canadian things ever Canadian though. Oh yeah, I mean this this you think a cosmic christmas was Canadian? Just just you wait. Just you Can- wait. The, the the credited cast is very short, and we can actually just go through it pretty quick. Yeah, let's just let's do it because uh, yeah, the content of the thing just really does not matter. But we'll get there. Yeah, we got Al Waxman who, um, just been in a was in a bunch of different random things. Cagney and Lacey had a recurring role on there. Um, probably had a, actually probably had a main role on there. Yeah. Um, got cut 126 episodes. Jeez. Um, also was involved in heavy metal, which will come into play in a little bit. Yes, absolutely. And also, I want to point out, uh, apparently starred in a made-for-TV Christmas special or Christmas movie based on the film The Naked City. And I'm going to have to insist that at some point we talk about that. because that's, Naked City, like the Jules Dassin movie? Yeah, like the New York City crime drama. Uh, and it also it was directed by Peter Bogdanovich, which is like the most film nerdy thing that you could possibly I- imagine there it is it exists it yeah, came out in 1998 you no know, jules Dassin did rafifi did he also yeah he also did naked city though okay yeah yeah well, yes I'm mixing up ancient directors it's like there's a, a made for tv movie based on that movie and also it's a christmas movie and also peter bogdanovich made it so that's that's a heck of a thing right there but anyway back to al waxman yeah and then uh, we got Sheila McCarthy, who's Agnes from Umbrella Academy. Oh, she's yeah. Also in, she's also in Die Hard 2, for what that's worth. Um, but she's in a lot of Christmas things. Uh, like you mentioned on here earlier, an assortment of Christmas tales in no particular order. I, I'm a fan of that title. That's a great title, yeah. Um, uh, she, she is very much a candidate for the Triple Threat Club, if we want her to be. 
Um, okay, Little Mosque on the Prairie, not Little House on the Prairie. It is still Canadian, though. It takes place in Saskatchewan. Oh, wow, okay. Wayne Robson Cube. Oh, yeah, no, we got we, got, we are Canadian. This is a very Canadian production with people you've vaguely maybe heard of before, or you've heard of a thing that they've been in. Yeah, if if you're in the United States, you've seen these people. You may not know their names, but you've seen these people before. Let's see. Kurt Rice, he was in a show called Lobby playing Edward McKay. Isn't that the guy you buy all your used uh, DVDs from? <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> Ed McKay's used books and more. Oh, boy. Yeah. Let's figure out that and more. Spirit Stallion of the Summer. And that seems Canadian, was it? Um, if it's not, it should have been. Are we are we talking about uh, Robert Kate here? Yeah, yeah. Okay, Spe- yeah. And also, oh, he was Colossus in the X Men cartoon. Okay, I'll take that. He seems to be just a general voice actor. It looks like. Yeah, it looks like he's a big, uh, an- big animation guy. What we're coming around to is like, yeah, th- this is an extremely Canadian animation kind of cast, but. Uh... Um, but yeah, you, you're you're running into a lot of uh, kind of like voice actor standbys, a lot of like Canadian, like uh, kind of the equivalent of session musicians, I guess I would say. Those kind of appear in a yeah. lot of different stuff. And, and one um, of the down, one of the downfalls of this kind of being as obscure as it is, is that IMDb does not list who any of these people are playing. So we're really just kind of guessing here. Yeah, because um, also the the cartoon doesn't list either. It just lists these names in, in the order presented here, and that's it. Yep, yep. So uh, we're not really going to guess at who played what, but if I had to guess, I'd say Al Waxman probably played Santa. Yeah, and Sheila and Gemma, were there even two female characters in the... Yes, there was. There was the the soulmate and the little girl. Yeah, so we haven't even gotten to the soulmates yet. Yeah, the soulmates are... They're the neutrinos from Ninja Turtles, but like really, really small. (laughs) See, I was going to say they, they came from the same planet as the Great Gazoo. And, and also, like, they they read a copy of The Secret, and it's their religion now. <laughs> I, I think that's what's going on. Like if Music you, by Dom Toretto. Hang on. Oh, Dom, Dom Troiano. Okay, never mind. Wow, you get me excited there for a second. Why was I so excited for that? I knew it was a joke. What's wrong with me tonight? <laughs> so let's just go ahead and talk about the... Um... The soulmates, because the thing that happens, the, like the inciting incident that happens is that a the dog, the seeing eye dog Truman decides to leave because uh, when Angris messes with his eyesight, he assumes, oh, I'm not fit enough to be a seeing eye dog anymore. And he packs his dog bag and leaves and runs away from home. Couple that with Santa is like watching the news and reading the newspaper, sees all the bad things happening in the world like, oh, uh a war is breaking out somewhere or other and people are, you know, ripping off Salvation Army kettles on the streets, which, you know, whatever. I mean, he's watching Home Alone too, I guess, but he's watching it from like, it looks like, it looks like where the super friends live. Yeah. I mean, Santa does live in the Fortress of Solitude, so that makes sense. But yeah, it's all, it's all this weird, like, like 80s cartoon technology stuff. Yeah. Where it's like he has a chair with like nine billion buttons on it and just there's levers that just do stuff, apparently. <laughs> he's he's basically Dr. Claw from Inspector Gadget. Yeah. <laughs> and Santa decides that like it's things are too bad out there in the world and nobody nobody has any Christmas spirit. It's, it's that chestnut again. No one believes in Santa. No one believes in Christmas spirit. I don't even believe in myself anymore. And he just decides to get in his rocket sled and fly away. Man, unless, Santa, unless you got a J.O. crystal that's losing power here, I mean, I, I, I you're losing me. <laughs> yeah, like, wait, when you say losing, you like, like, you're not sympathetic to this? No, like, I, I'm losing the trail. It's like, look, if you show me a crystal that's low on power, I understand. Oh, I see. If, if there's not actually a corporeal, like, meter that shows the, the, the level of Christmas spirit in the world, it's all just nonsense. Yes, and that, and that meter is specifically a crystal that is low on power, which you can tell that by it's not shining very brightly. Right. I am a six-year-old, and I need this to be shown to me visually. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's like we had that one road trip movie. It's like, no, no, I need you to have the map with a little cartoon car driving over it if you're going to make me believe this is a road trip. Exactly. The same thing. Show me the damn crystal. <laughs> That's very true. That's very true. Uh, so Santa escapes... 
on his rocket sled, never to be seen again. And then, then that's when we meet the soulmates. And the soulmates, uh, the best, uh, the best description I have is like, this is like remember the beginning of It's a Wonderful Life when like George Bailey is about to kill himself, and then it cuts to like the stars in the sky and the stars tar- start blinking and talking to each other. This is that, but animated. Yeah, like this is that, like like. Uh, the two soulmates, they're named Orion and Aurelia, are watching as Santa's reindeer comet basically ma- uh, makes a prayer for Santa to come back. And why is and, Comet the leader of the reindeer? Yes. Yes. The, the reindeer that most Christmas things like to feature front and center. Most things that aren't named Prancer. Uh, but the soulmates hear this prayer and then the giant prayer bubble turns around. And there's a giant face on it. He's like, he sends them off to go and answer this prayer. Yeah, and I, and I was being dumb earlier, but like, it would have been nice to have some sort of like thing Santa looks at and says, "Wow, Christmas spirit's very low." Because right now, it just seems like Santa's being mopey and doesn't want to work. Which, I mean, big fucking mood, but like, also, I'm not Santa. I mean, he did he did literally open a newspaper and it said a war breaks out. So I don't know how much. How much more confirmation you need? Santa's getting that. depressed over the Gulf War. This is 1991. <laughs> uh, any any war is is inadvisable and unwanted. So I understand. Uh, but they're so the, the soulmates are on their way. But they make it to the North Pole. Guess who's infiltrated Santa's elves? It's the Doubting Thomas. And I'm not kidding you. This this, this kid is literally Montana Max from Tiny Toons. He's even that got... Or like the little mobster from Looney Tunes is, is named Bugsy is probably his name. Mugsy? Yes. Yeah, because he's got like the five o'clock shadow and he's chomping on a cigar. And he's trying to like fit in with the elves and be like, yeah, we should. Why don't we? Why do we need a Santa Claus? We don't even need, we don't need to do any of this mess. And the plan eventually becomes we're going to make dolls that look like Downing Thomas and that tell kids things to make them doubt themselves. And that's how we're going to ruin Christmas. I don't know about this plan. It's a good plan, I guess. It's like if you, if you want to, I, I, I guess it's like you're trying to turn all kids into like objectivists or something. Just like believe in nothing, believe in nothing, not even really yourself. We're nihilist, Lebowski. We believe in nothing. Sounds tiring. <laughs> exactly. Oh, boy. But, yeah, it's it's very... I, I, I'm not even really going to say it's bad, because the, the people that worked on this, you can kind of smell the Don Bluth around the edges, really. It, yeah, there's definitely a Bluth kind of influence to, to what's going on here, Like at least the, the style alone. Because, like, yeah, some of the characters very much look like kind of the, the round, goofy look of, like, um, Alvin, the, one of the guys, the Chris Shouten, uh, the director also credits Alvin the Chipmunks, and yeah, some of the elves really have like a chipmunky look to them. But then, like the dog and the girl are like just they look like someone's. I, I know you mean this in a bad way, but they look like someone's like draft from All Dogs Go to Heaven. It's yeah, just, see, I, see, I was gonna say like that the dog Truman, he looks just like what's the dog's name from One Hundred One Dalmatians? That's Pongo. Him. Pongo. Yes, he is he is spotless Pongo. He is spotless Pongo. Yeah, that's. There's a, good, there's a good band name out there if anybody wants it. Yeah, she likes cloth. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, the, the 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 animation's not too terrible. It it I think we said this before. It feels like this might be a pilot or a, 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 a like an attempted pilot for something. That's definitely yeah the vibe I get from this because the the soulmates are established as like a capital T thing. We're supposed to know. Same with. Um, Angus Bethune? What's this guy's name? Ang- Angris? A-N-G-R-I-S. Angris McBrag. Angris McBrag. We, we sh- apparently, we should have a better idea of who he is, because he also just kind of leaves at the end of just like, oh, well, I'll get you next time. Yeah, they, um, escape, they escape like we're supposed to expect to see them again. Very much so. So this, is defini- this definitely has the feel of like an early 90s like Saturday morning cartoon pilot that just happens to be animated. I don't know if that was the intent because this is very much a Christmas special. And yeah, there's three yeah. songs in it and one or two of them could easily be like truncated down to a theme song for a show. I would say oh, they kind of possible. have that vibe. 
Yeah, it's possible. But I would actually like really love to know the answer to that, like whether it was created to be like a half hour special or if it was intended to be something lar- larger and more, um, I guess, episodic. So if yes. anybody out there has any clues, I would love to know. Tweet at us at Xmas Creeps on Twitter. Because I can't say anything about this one in particular, but I definitely remember having some like tapes, some of them taped off of HBO or something, but some of them definitely pre-made of just a random selection of cartoons that you're just like, what on earth is this? Like, I remember a Beetle Bailey cartoon. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, just like just random episodes of stuff like that. Um, I, I, see, I remember I had a tape like that when I was a kid that had like, there was like an episode of Mighty Mouse. There was an episode of the Three Stooges cartoon. There was probably a Bugs Bunny thrown in there or something, but like, it was kind of a random assortment of cartoons that, uh, there was very wishy-washy licensing going on there because there's no way they could have sold that the way it was. Yeah, and speaking of Canada, a lot of these ones I remember probably were released by Deke, so probably they had something to do with its uh, release. That's possible, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it reminds me kind of, of all things, of like it, it back in the early days of CD when like like you'd get those like... Uh, game compilations are just a bunch of random shareware stuff. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Like that, where it's just like, you know, eight games, and it's like, all of them are shareware, and all of them are just random things that you get for free, but it's like, oh, you're basically paying for the cost of the CD, I guess. More or less, yeah. Because um, the other two cartoons on this are not related, on this tape are not related at all, are they? Not that I know of. So, so, so yeah, I'll go through, the, I'll go through the, the plot really quick. Yeah, like, yeah the, finish it out. Uh, Thomas kind of sneaks in as one of the elves, even though he has a five o'clock shadow and is smoking a cigar, which none of the elves are doing either of those things. Right. Um, then, um, while Santa is gone, Santa, Santa crashes the sleigh and decides, oh, well, time to be a bum. And so he starts sleeping on a park bench. And then Truman also is, decides to sleep on a park bench. Um, mm-hmm. Comet eventually finds them with the help of the um, soulmates. Then Aurelia. Aurelia gets captured and taken to the North Pole by Angris, who takes over and starts making doubt- doubt- the Doubting Thomas dolls. Um, then there's some back and forth, and then they start talking about imagination magic, which is just like, if you believe it hard enough, it's just the secret. If you believe it hard enough, it comes true. Yeah, exactly. Um, and so they do that, and they win the day, and then the dog goes back to the blind girl, and Santa goes back to the North Pole, and yeah, next time Gadget, next time that guy runs off. There's like mm-hmm. three songs throughout the entire thing. I think I mentioned that. Um, yeah, overall, it's I I can't really say anything too bad about it because it's like everything about it's competently put together. Um, it feels nonsensical just because I feel like we're missing about half the story here. Yeah, it it it, it really feels truncated. Like it's it feels f- like I should know who Angris is. That I should know who. Um, the soulmates are that I should even know a little bit more about this blind girl, maybe even so, but even though I think the blind girl whose name is L Ella, I believe even that I can kind of hand wave away and say, we we don't really need to know more of that story though. It's, it's honestly kind of nice to see uh, uh, any Christmas special animated or otherwise, you know, kind of heavily feature uh, a blind character like this. Like we see her reading Braille and doing, and you know, it's, it's nice. It's, it's, not something you would have yeah. thought to see in like a '90s special for sure. Yeah, I, I was. I, I, what I'm thinking of is I'm imagining like if there's like an opening scene throughout the credits of like Ella and Truman just doing like normal stuff in their life, just so when we see something goofy happen, we know this is something strange. Right. You know? Be- because when when Angris like messes with Truman's eyesight, it's not immediately apparent that he's a seeing eye dog. It only becomes apparent later when she's holding on to him because he's a seeing eye dog. Yeah. It's yeah. So there, there's definitely. It feels like they've definitely like truncated this from a much larger story. Yeah, I feel like this was originally an hour with commercials instead of a half hour with commercials. Maybe. That is that, certainly that, possible. Yeah, because that also would pace out the three songs better. Of just like not like, oh, you just finished a song and you're doing a new one. Okay, Rogers and Hammerstein. <laughs> Whatever you guys say. All right, so I've got the playlist here. Uh, so what this this user. Uh, who I guess I'll go ahead and credit him, Josh Rastia. He says, this is a playlist of a two VHS collection box of Christmas cartoons released, distributed by Questar sometime in the early 90s. The first tapes, 
two cartoons appear to be well known, so I used higher res uploads for the others on this list. So I think what he's trying to say is like, there's four cartoons in this playlist. One of the tapes, I guess, has gone missing. This is just the other tape. So the one tape we've got here is the Christmas Tree Train from 1983, Chucklewood Critters, Twas the Day Before Christmas from 1993. The Christmas Gift of Light from 1991, and then The Trolls and the Christmas Express from 1980. Okay, so what he's saying is that there's a second tape that he doesn't have, but on this tape, there are two cartoons that people are aware of, more or less, and then there's two that are kind of, what on earth is this? Yeah, exactly. Okay. So, and and this one, The Christmas Gift of Light, this is the one that was, like, the big mystery. And, and mostly just because I'm assuming nobody has, has seen or heard of this in the past 30 years. So this one random screenshot of one of Santa's elves that gets circulated on the Internet. You know, people said that it kind of looked like a Don Bluth thing. Some people said that it looked like uh, a, a series from the 80s called The Littles, which I can definitely confirm it's not because I watched a hell of a lot of that when I was a little kid. And that's even in like the related things down at the bottom. Yeah, like this is not. This is not that. So, yeah, more like this. The Trolls, the Christmas Express, the Little Troll Prince, the Littles, and Timeless oh. Tales from Hallmark. Yeah, yeah. So that so clearly people that are looking this up on IMDb are also looking those things up, too. That's how the Internet works. So uh, what can we glean from all of this? What is it about, like, this? Uh, well, I guess I'm asking a question that I should be answering. Like, why did I want to watch this? why the lost media wiki i mean because it's because it's, it's there or not there as it because were. because it's not been there and now it is is what it is yeah in my opinion that's 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 you hit the nail on the head it's it's a recent discovery and we want to find out and you know having only come across this mystery in the last couple of days i can't say that if this is one that's been eating away at me like the way it has some people but i'm certainly glad that the answer has been found because now we can all enjoy this strange little cartoon and i can't even say that i disliked it necessarily because this is definitely kind of a charming little cartoon it's just my main complaint like you said is it's very short and it feels like there should be more here so we didn't really even say whether or not this was a stocking stuffer but i feel like it is because i don't feel comfortable giving this like a full uh, crankometer rating. No, this this would definitely be something if if we're actually like sitting down watching random videos on on or near Christmas. This would definitely be like a check this out type thing. Yeah, like a hey guys, you have to come and see this. Like it's, this was this would stop the Christmas party dead in its tracks to use our yeah. our usual metric. Like everybody's going to crowd around the TV and go, oh my gosh, it's that thing I've been seeing on Twitter. And there's there's some novelty to that, like like you said. I didn't necessarily dislike watching this. I had some fun with it, but uh, it's extremely Canadian. I'll say that. Yes, clearly Canadian. <laughs> so, yeah, The Christmas Gift of Light, it's out there on YouTube if you want to watch it. We'll put a link to that in our show notes. Um I also misspoke earlier. If you want to get at us on Twitter, our our handle is Christmas Creeps at Christmas Creeps on Twitter. So if you want to email us, it's Xmas Creeps at gmail.com. Jonathan, any final words about the Christmas gift of light before we go? I know we kind of just sped through it here, but we kind of just wanted to highlight what a weird little discovery this was. Yeah, this was strange because it it, it all just every part of it kind of feels feels familiar because it's an anime style you kind of know because it's kind of Don Bluthy. Yeah. And it's and it kind of doesn't stray too far from the beaten path in terms of like cartoon and like specials, things like that, Christmas related things. But I think it's also you have it's just also baffling. Yeah. And I think just for us in particular, it kind of checks off a lot of boxes of things that we kind of look for when we're trying to find uh uh, shows and things to watch on on Christmas Creep. So you know it's it's an animated Christmas special. Uh, there's no parents involved somehow. There's a talking dog involved. Which hey, we finally got a talking dog in the dog days of summer. Good for us. Uh, and it, it's like semi lost media. So it's like everything that we're s- kind of somewhat uh, obsessed with on this show all wrapped up into one little Christmas short. 
kind of like the last episode with with uh, the Christmas mannequins and whatnot. Uh, we have weird obsessions on this show. I, I will freely admit that. So here's a crazy, crazy, crazy thing. Um, I was just playing random YouTube videos and I was playing, I want to say it was Danny Gonzalez and not Drew Gooden. Okay. Of just talking about just just uh, trash Christmas movies on like Netflix or Hallmark, one of the streaming things. And one of them totally was a completely different, unrelated mannequin at Christmas movie. Mannequin comes life at Christmas. Are you kidding me? What is it? Oh man, I'll have to I'll put a put a link in or something like that because, or just you want to call us out while I look for it real quick. Is it called Holly's Holiday? Yes, almost certainly. New York City ad executive Holly Maddox dreams of the perfect life, perfect job, and, the, and of course, the perfect man to sweep her off her feet. When she wakes up one day to find the perfect man awaiting for her, who is nothing more than a mannequin come to life, she must decide yes. if perfect is perfect, the perfect fit for her. <laughs> okay, so Holly's Holiday, good lord. But yeah, um, yeah. All I can say is, if you live in a place where Sycamore distributes to, um, this uh, pumpkin latte blonde's pretty decent. Yeah, I'll have to check that out. And this cranberry seltzer is nothing to sneeze at either, unless you're allergic to cranberry. Well, yeah, then you're definitely going to sneeze at it. So yeah, that's. <laughs> I don't really know what else to say tonight. I kind of just wanted to watch this short and discuss it with you, and hopefully, well, no, mission accomplished. Yeah, mission accomplished. We did it. That's what you, that's what you spent the night doing. Congratulations. We did it, um, folks. But at what cost? At, <laughs> at what price, Glory? That's going to do it for Christmas Creeps. I hope, we've enl- I hope we've enlightened you or at least entertained you in our uh, bafflement tonight. Because like, even, even more so than like Rhapsody Street Kids or A Cosmic Christmas, this is just one of those Christmas specials that like it. it it got put in a hole in the ground, hopefully never to be seen again, and then someone dug it up, and now we have to look at it. And, you know... I mean, the fact that it's not the worst animated thing in the world helps. Oh, absolutely. Uh, it's it's not a bad little special by any means, no. But just the, the fact that the internet rediscovered it and the fact that it's kind of sat dormant for so long is very interesting to me. It's just the way that the internet kind of picks these things up and puts them back out there uh you know you, you never know what, what you're gonna find on an old vhs tape so yeah uh, i mean it, yeah. it could have got it could have gone with a character speaking in tongues and going christmas voiced by deborah wilson i mean <laughs> not gonna turn that down i mean that 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 would make just about any christmas thing infinitely better but alas so folks uh stay tuned for our next episode we'll, we'll hopefully be back later in september uh with with something uh, a little more mainstream, I'm going to guess. And I'm definitely looking forward to that. Jonathan Five, thank you so much for joining me tonight. You're welcome. I'm going to go play Final Fantasy XIV online. Oh, boy. I'm going to go play Spelunky 2 because I've gotten hooked on that again. Oh, boy, what is wrong with us? Folks, thank you for listening, and good night. Happy Christmas! Happy Christmas!